Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and I'm back doing another app spotlight on MultiMC, which has just come out with version 4. Fork has been hard at work doing all kinds of cool additions and upgrades to MultiMC, so if you're a big fan of MultiMC, you should definitely check out the upgraded version. And if you're not, now's the greatest time to check it out, because honestly, he's added so many cool things to this functionality of this app that uh, I'm kind of blown away. So without further ado, let's start checking out all the different new additions to MultiMC version 4. All right, let's get started checking out MultiMC version 4. Just double click on it, and as soon as you launch the program, if you haven't already launched it before, it's going to go ahead and create a folder for MultiMC version 4, and inside there you'll see an instances folder and a mods folder. Instances is where any instances you create get created, just like in previous versions. Let's go ahead and create a new instance now. First off, you'll notice that there's a couple new options here. You can copy a selected instance, you can import an existing Minecraft folder, or you can import a config pack, which I'll get into in just a bit. But for now, I'm going to add a new instance, and I'm going to call it Demo Instance 1, because I'm demonstrating this for a spotlight. Ooh, it's got a neat little Enderman icon. Cool. And if you go ahead and launch that, as always, let's go ahead and log in. So I've launched Minecraft, as always, and you can see I'm on Minecraft version 1.3.2. Awesome. Just as normal, you could go ahead and start playing the game, but now let's start playing with MultiMC. So I've got Demo Instance 1 here, and I'm going to right-click on this and do Edit Mods. Cool. And as usual, I'm going to go ahead and drag the Minecraft Forge zip file into the jar mods folder but you'll notice that there's now a new tab called core mods folder what are core mods well core mods is actually a function of the latest version of minecraft forge uh, it's actually part of uh, the forge mod loader um, mod and basically what the core mods folder is it's it's a way to load mods that need to make base edits without putting them directly in your jar so with multi mc it's not that much of a difference because it's just drag and drop but if you were editing this if you're using forge and forge mod loader you can go ahead and just drag and drop your code chicken core for example and your not enough items folder um, jar files directly into the core mods folder and what that does is it pretty much sets it up so that they get added into the jar as soon as you launch the instance without actually having to modify the jar so in theory with forge mod loader and the latest version of forge the only uh, mod that needs to go into the jar file is Minecraft Forge, and any other mods that might need to edit base classes can go into the core mods folder if they're written properly. And then into the mods folder I'm going to go ahead and drop forestry in there, just as a demonstration. And now you can see me in Minecraft where I've got FML and the latest version of Forge running, and we'll go ahead and create a new world, just for demonstration purposes. And hey, looks like everything worked just perfectly, we've got a bunch of forestry items here and NEI is working great. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and right-click on this guy and just show you guys if you view the folder for this instance. In the .minecraft, there's now the core mods folder, like I told you about. That's where your code chicken cord not enough items jar would have landed. And the mods folder has forestry. So this is all pretty existing and standard functionality of uh, MultiMC from before, except it now supports the core mods folder that is part of the latest version of FML Forge Mod Loader. Now let's say that I've got this complicated instance here that I want to share with some friends. Well, MultiMC makes that very, very easy. We just go into the Edit Mods window here, and we click on the Export button. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us the option to export a config pack. And basically what a config pack contains is a list of all mods and the versions required, as well as all the config files for those mods. It makes it very easy to share config files and a list of mods with your friends without exporting the mod folders and files themselves, um, just because of the way that, you know, permissions thing should work. You can give it a name, so let's just give this a demo config pack, and we'll just say that this is for the YouTube Spotlight. Cool. Click Next. You can see that there's a bunch of config files that it automatically identified for you. So there's the NEI settings and the forestry settings and all that stuff. You could optionally export your own options.txt, which is the file that contains all your key configs and all your, you know, vanilla Minecraft options. Um, and by default, that's left unchecked. So when you're exporting an instance, it automatically figures out what mods are installed and finds all the config files for you. And you can check and uncheck if you want to include or exclude any config files. Click Finish, and you've got an option to choose where to store your stuff. I'm going to go down to that multi-MC spotlight folder that I had a moment ago, and we'll call this the demo config pack zip file. Save. There we go. Now if I look at the mods folder here, um, the... Yep, mods and the multi MC spotlight folder, you'll see the demo config pack.zip. 
So what's inside that zip file is a list of all the mods you need as well as the config files for those mods. Now let's go back to MultiMC and create a new instance and we're going to import a config pack. All we have to do is find that demo config pack that we exported earlier. You could send this to your friends or maybe one of your friends sent it to you. You're going to import it and it tells you it's named demo config pack and the notes that you entered before for YouTube Spotlight. Click next. From there, it's going to go into your central mods folder and check to see if all those mods already exist inside your central mods folder and list any that are missing. So right now it's telling me that I'm missing pretty much all of them. What is the central mods folder? Well, if you click on view central mods folder, you'll notice right here that inside your multi MC version 4 folder, there is a folder called mods. That's your central mods folder. It's a great place to just store all your mods, but it's also where multi MC is going to look for all the mods that it needs for its uh, instance import. So I've got a list of all the mods that I need sitting right over here. All I've got to do is click and drag. Let's bring over the Minecraft Forge one for now. And I'm just going to copy it over there. Perfect. Now when I go back to MultiMC and hit refresh, it's going to say, all right, I've already got Minecraft Forge, but I still need Forestry, Code Chicken Core, and not enough items. So let's grab those three files now and copy them into the MultiMC Central Mods folder. Now when I refresh, I've got all the mods I need. So all I have to do is click finish and name the instance. Name it whatever you want. Oh, I guess that was too long. I'll just name it demo instance 2. Now the demo instance 2 folder is created and if we click edit mods here you'll see it already placed the Minecraft Forge Universal in the jar mod section, the not enough items in code chicken core in the core mod section, and forestry went into the mods folder. Perfect. So it pretty much imported for us all the mods we needed automatically. It knew exactly what versions to get, and it also knew to import all the config files for us. So if we go over here and do view folder, you can see that the config files for forestry and NEI have already been brought in. Beautiful. So if you want to create an instance and get all the config sorted out and then share it with your friends, go ahead and do it this way. And that way you don't have to distribute the mods if you don't want. They can go ahead and download them themselves and just use your config files nice, quick, and easy. So I just created a new instance called Demo Instance 3, and you can see it's downloading as usual from Minecraft's website and getting version 1.3.2 of Minecraft for me. But maybe I want to use a bunch of mods, and a lot of those mods just aren't ready yet for Minecraft 1.3.2. Don't fear, because MultiMC has a great new feature. Let's check this out by right-clicking and choosing Downgrade. We can downgrade this version of, multi of uh, Minecraft to any version all the way back to, I don't know, pretty far really early alpha versions. You can go back to 1.0 if you want, or back to 1.2.5. You can downgrade directly to Minecraft, I don't know, 1.8 or 1.7.3. You can even go back pretty far in the alphas. There are some very early alphas that do not work, but uh, for the most part, a lot of these do. Pretty awesome. So if I wanted to, I could revert back to Minecraft 1.7.3 in the beta stages. Let's go back to, I don't know, Minecraft 1.8.1. That was a good version. Hit OK. Dun dun dun. This was powered by MC Nostalgia, and many of you guys may have used that in the past. Fork basically hooked up with the MC Nostalgia group and got this going. So I'm going to hit OK here and log into Minecraft. Note now that I'm currently on Minecraft Beta 1.8.1. This was a quick and easy way to downgrade to an earlier version of Minecraft. Cool. I'm going to create a new world, and it's generating the level. And ta-da, I'm suddenly in Minecraft Beta 1.8.1. How cool is that? All kinds of neat stuff to check out if you want to see some of the earlier versions of Minecraft or if you want to revert back and play with some earlier versions with some mods. Awesome and quick and easy way to do it. Again, Minecraft uh, MC Nostalgia uh, hooked up with Fork and uh, they pretty much helped to implement this for him. All right, just a few more things to touch on before we wrap up this app spotlight on MultiMC. Uh, the check for updates button is still here and it works really well. Let's go into settings and check out that there's a couple different GUI style settings. Uh, by default, we start out with the default setting. It makes perfect sense. And it tells you you have to close out of MultiMC and relaunch it in order to see that. This is the way the default layout is uh, the new one. And you can see there's a bunch of different options here with some different buttons set up on the right hand side. And you can play your different instances like this. Uh, uh, I personally like the simple style, which is kind of, uh, you know, the way it was in the previous version. So I go ahead into the settings and switch it back to that. 
pretty cool, but you can use whichever one you like. You can choose to show the console when the instance is running, and automatically close when the game quits, and automatically check for updates or not, and where to store your instances folder. Um, also a neat option is the Minecraft window size. I don't know if you guys noticed, but whenever you launch Minecraft, it's kind of a smaller size. Let's go ahead and check the box that says Start Minecraft Minimized, or Maximized, I mean. And now when I go ahead and launch Demo Instance 1, for example, it's going to go ahead and launch it Maximized. How cool is that? I like that option a lot. It means I don't have to hit the Maximize button every time I launch the instance, which, for me, I did a lot. And going back through the settings here, there were just a couple other options to check out. Just like before, you have the option to uh, choose your memory allocation sizes, where your Java path is, and uh, all kinds of other cool stuff. Pretty neat. So MultiMC version 4.0 brings you a lot of different options. Now one more setting you guys might have seen here are the instance console colors and these different colors you can choose here. What those are about is when you launch a uh, instance folder, so let's go ahead and launch demo instance 1, um, and I had a checked box earlier that said when you do launch this it keeps the multi-MC console open in the background, which is cool. This will automatically color code certain error messages or warning messages that might pop up, so you can see here some text is blue, other text might be black, and some text might be red if there's any errors or something. Something like that. Cool. And I believe that pretty much covers all the changes and additions to MultiMC in version 4.0. I should mention for you guys that this was actually a complete rewrite by Fork. It used to be in C Sharp, which required .NET, so you needed to install .NET before doing it. This version is actually written in C++, which means .NET is no longer required. It's pretty awesome. He did a really nice job on MultiMC version 4.0, and you guys definitely should go check it out. If you're already using version 3, I think it's as quick and easy as clicking the update button, or just go down download the latest version from his website or uh, his forum post, which I'll link in the description of this video. So this is Direwolf20 signing off on the App Spotlight from MultiMC version 4. Definitely go check it out and hope you guys enjoyed watching. Take it easy.